These are the highest paid skills in IT and cybersecurity. And I'll also be sharing free training throughout this video, so be sure to watch until the end. I wanted to kick off this video with a brief update on the overall cybersecurity and IT job market, specifically on the US government removing the four-year degree requirement for cybersecurity and IT jobs. Now, this is one of the biggest initiatives I've seen away from hiring traditional college grads and moving towards skill-based hiring. And another reason why now more than ever, there is so much that you can learn online, whether it be through training, workshops, online courses or any other medium without requiring their candidates to have a four-year degree. And quoting the article directly, this policy shift was created to make it easier for government agencies to compete for cybersecurity and IT talent. And this entire initiative is also going to include an expansion of their work-based learning program through registered apprenticeships with a $244 million investment. So there's a huge need for IT and cybersecurity talent, but the biggest issue is the skills gap. And that is where this video comes in, where I'll be sharing some of the highest paid skills in the sector, as well as some of the highest paid roles in IT and cybersecurity. All right, the first skill set I want to share on this list is network engineering. And the average salary for a network engineer is $108,000 in the US. A network engineer designs, implements, and manages the networks that allows organizations to communicate, share resources, and do their work effectively. This could include configuring any network protocols, implementing network security controls, maintaining and upgrading any software, hardware, or firmware to keep the network up and running, as well as, of course, keeping everything well documented to be used as reference for any future upgrades or projects. In terms of the tooling that you should learn to become a network engineer, learning how to configure common networking devices like Junos or other tools like Wireshark and Nmap are a great place to start as a beginner. And here's how to get free networking and IT training. Thank you to Juniper Networks for sponsoring this video. Juniper Networks Open Learning Program provides free IT training paths so you can get started as a complete beginner and learn all the foundations you need to get job ready. The best place to start is with networking since this is the foundational skill with overlap in both IT and cybersecurity. Understanding networking can also help you spot security risks, troubleshoot technical issues, and set up cyber defenses like firewalls skills that are needed for many IT or cybersecurity professionals. Juniper Networks offers comprehensive technical training for networking security, automation, DevOps, data center, and other technical concepts that you'll need to get an entry-level job. And once you complete the free self-paced online training, you can also earn a discounted exam voucher for 75% off to get officially certified. In the network engineering training, you'll find modules on Juno's operating system fundamentals, initial system configuration, user authentication and archiving, system logging, operations monitoring, routing fundamentals, static and dynamic routing, firewall filters, Juniper security concepts, and IPv6 fundamentals. So this is a great place to start to get familiar with the foundations. Juniper Networks also has free training paths for security engineering, cloud engineering, data center engineering, and automation engineering. So you can choose the specific learning paths that you're most interested in. And their free security engineering training covers the basics and configurations of Juno's security devices, security policies and services, content filtering and web filtering, NAT or network address translation, site-to-site -site IPsec VPN, monitoring and reporting, and other security networking concepts. Juniper is one of the leading IT networking companies in the world, and this certification will be a great addition onto your resume when you start applying to jobs. And again, the training is completely free, so you have nothing to lose and a lot to learn. To start their free training, you can go to juniper.net slash with Sandra or click on the link in my description to start learning. All right, next up is cloud engineering. The average salary for a cloud engineer is $130,000 in the US. So what does a cloud engineer do? One thing I want to call out is as a beginner, you may want to focus on learning one specific cloud platform first, just so you can hone in on that specific skill set. And three of the most common cloud providers out there are Microsoft Azure, Amazon AWS, and the Google Cloud Platform. A cloud engineer designs, implements, and manages cloud infrastructure for an organization, whether it be for their private, public, or hybrid cloud. This allows companies to run applications, store data, and access resources from a cloud provider 
in their cloud environment versus an on-prem data center. A big part of your job could be making sure that the data users and applications hosted on the cloud are secure and resources are only shared with the specific users who need them. Another piece of your job may be managing what resources get deployed and how they scale depending on your company's policies around cloud and the types of applications and data that can be stored within the cloud. Because for example, if you are a bank and you have highly sensitive user data or customer data that cannot be stored in cloud infrastructure, these guidelines should be outlined in any policies your company has on cloud compute. It may also be part of your job as a cloud engineer to ensure that your cloud infrastructure is being used according to the policies and standards that your company has set. And as you're just starting out, getting familiar with the different services on the specific cloud platform that you want to focus on first is really important. For example, if you're starting with AWS, you should get familiar with services like EC3, Lambda, S3 Bucket, and their other commonly used services. Many of these cloud platforms also provide free training, so I would highly recommend checking those out because as a cloud provider, they also want cloud professionals who are familiar with their products. And for most of these platforms, you can go on and spin up your own environments just to get some experience to tinker around with. Our right, next up is data center engineering. The average salary for a data engineer is $154,000 per year in the US. As a data center engineer, your job is to manage the day-to-day -day operations of your company's data center. This includes any servers, storage devices, and networking devices that your company is hosting in their own data centers. This is typically going to be much more hands-on than a cloud engineering role, since you also have to focus on the availability and performance of your devices, ensuring that any old or broken devices are replaced in a timely manner, and of course, making sure that there is redundancy and backups for the data that is stored in your data center, as well as for backup power to keep the lights on. This is a very hands-on role, but it is one that is very, very important since there are a lot of industries that need to have their own data centers and cannot store certain data or run certain applications in a cloud environment. Typically, this is going to be for sectors and companies that have more sensitive data. That includes government agencies, defense contractors, or big banks and financial institutions. This also gives you a greater level of control over who goes in and out and the exact devices and policies you have around your data center, but that also in turn costs more for a company to keep a data center running. But regardless, even a cloud infrastructure is just someone else's data center. So at the end of the day, both of these skill sets are highly important and it's up to you which one you want to learn. Number four on this list is an automation engineer who make an average salary of $106,000 per year in the US. An automation engineer is exactly what it sounds like. They develop and design systems and processes that automate certain tedious tasks for different parts of the organization. This can be done in networking, software development, cybersecurity, and for non-technical areas as well. DevOps is often a big focus for automation engineers. And since this video is focusing specifically on IT and cybersecurity roles, there are many different areas that you could be focusing on, whether it be the deployment of code or automating certain updates throughout your network. As an automation engineer, you should focus on learning DevOps best practices, learn a common scripting language like Python, and how to use Ansible and REST APIs to automate certain tooling. I'd also highly recommend picking up some XML, JSON, or YAML, as these are commonly used for automation no matter what technologies you're dealing with. All right, the last skill on this list is security engineering. And security engineers make an average salary of $153,000 per year in the US. Now, if you watch my channel, you know that I primarily make videos on starting a career in cybersecurity, but whether you're interested in IT or cyber, this course is very, very in-depth. Your job as a security engineer is to implement and design processes and systems that ensure your organizations, your customers, your data, and employees stay secure. The pillars of your job as a security engineer goes back to the CIA triad or confidentiality, integrity, and availability of data. As a security engineer, you may be providing feedback or guidance from a security perspective to the development team for a new project that may require your input. You may be handling an incident or dealing with a vulnerability. You may also be working with the IT team to figure out certain network security protocols that need to be configured on your network. You may also be working through security audits and compliance requirements. So for security engineers, your job is very very broad and depending on the day, it could look different, which honestly could also be said for any role on this list. Getting familiar with using tools like an SIEM, endpoint detection, antivirus, vulnerability scanners, pen testing tools, even code scanning tools like SAS or DAS will be really helpful going into a role in security engineering. So if you made it this far in the video, I'm really glad to see you here. I also have a list of IT and cybersecurity projects that you can work on, and I'll link those down in my description. But at a high level, some of the best projects that you can do typically involve hands-on experience that you can do in your home lab, like spinning up an SIEM, spinning up your own host-based intrusion detection system, or even creating your own phishing attack simulator. 
and I'll share the resources for how to get started with these projects for free, also linked in my description. Thank you again to Juniper Networks for sponsoring today's video. And be sure to check out their free IT networking training using the link in my description. Again, it's free, so definitely take advantage of it. Don't forget to also join our Discord channel and feel free to connect on LinkedIn. I post a lot more real-time career resources on there as well. I also recently made a cybersecurity Instagram at cyberwithsandra, so I would love to see you there as well. Let me know your thoughts on this video in the comments. If this video was helpful, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.